Hey, everybody. Michael Crump here, yet again, talking about consoles, console hacking, and really just how to get more out of your system. So today, I'm going to be talking about installing a new hard disk drive into your original Xbox. In prior episodes, I have shown you how to soft mod your Xbox. I've also shown you how to remove the clock capacitor as well as TSOP flash your Xbox. I'm going to continue today with that same Xbox that we've been using, and I'm going to install this new hard disk drive. Let's go ahead and jump into this now. Okay, so as you can see here, I have a Western Digital 1.0 terabyte hard disk drive. This is actually in one of my older USB enclosures. And I thought I would keep this in here just to let you know, you don't always have to go out and buy a brand new hard drive. You may have one just kind of lying around, or heck, you may even want to take a gamble and get something off of something like Craigslist or OfferUp, etc. And as you can see here, it really didn't take very much. There was, I think, four screws all the way around it. Then I was able to open up this top part and pull the hard disk drive out. And also, in case you want to look up any of the model numbers to get one exactly like mine. Another very quick tip here is, is that when you have extra screws, for example, in order to keep up with them, just tape them. So I taped mine in here. I'm going to put the case back on it. And then whenever I need this again, it'll be ready to go. Okay, easy enough. You flip over your Xbox. You can remove the feet. And then there are these six screws here. It only takes just a minute to get these out. Again, this is a T20 that I use here. Once those are out, you basically flip over the console as we did before. And you're just going to lift this lid just straight up. Then let's go ahead and let's remove that IDE cable from the hard disk, as well as let's take out the power connector. Now that the power has been disconnected, I just feed that back through where it doesn't catch when I'm getting ready to pull out my hard disk drive. There is one screw that we're going to need to remove here first in order to get the hard disk drive tray back out. Let's go ahead and remove that. And now we can just pull straight up and we have access to our hard disk drive. There is four screws we're going to need to remove. Let's go ahead and knock these two out right here. In these, I am using a Torque 15. And on the other side, two more here. Okay, and just pull the hard disk drive up and it will be freed from the enclosure. Now is a pretty good time to go ahead and to clean up that enclosure and this drive is not going to be used anymore so more than likely this drive will go in the electronic recycling with the new drive just go ahead and place it in just like i am doing here you'll know that it's correct when at least the screw holes line up as you can see that they're lining up right here and we need to put those four screws right back inside of it okay looking good so we need to go back to our original Xbox and we need to go ahead and remove the IDE cable from the DVD drive as well as we're going to need to go ahead and remove that power cable as well. There is two screws. Again, we did this in the previous video up at the very top. There's one of them and now we've got another one here and you can lift this drive straight up. And we need to do this because obviously we need to replace this IDE cable that's connected to the motherboard. Go ahead and pull that out. You won't be using that one anymore. And we will be replacing that IDE cable with a new cable that is 80 pins. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Okay, so one thing you will need to get is going to be this IDE to SATA adapter. So I bought this one on eBay. Opening this up, you can see we've got one little pin, and this is going to be for the master or for the slave setting on the adapter. 
And so this is one of the known adapters that actually works. And yes, you do have to be pretty particular on which ones that you pick. What you're mainly looking for here is just these two capacitors down at the bottom left. There's also a model number on this here, which is just VR for version M03C. And on the back here, this is obviously the SATA connector, which will go to your SATA hard disk drive. So there is a master up here at the top, and then at the very bottom, there is a slave. What we need to do is we need to cross these two pins right here, which is master, and we'll need to put our jumper cable on these two pins. Okay, so just go ahead and open this back up. Okay, so that is what it will look like. Okay, and there is what was on the outside of the package. I don't know if it's helpful, but I'm going to keep this in there. Okay, so this is the 80-pin IDE cable. I went ahead and folded mine beforehand. You can do this or you don't have to do this. I do believe there's probably better ways to fold it. I kind of eyeballed it. Um, but if you want more precise instructions on how to fold, I'm sure there's YouTube videos out there for that. Okay, now time to start putting some of this back together again. So here, I'm just going ahead and I'm plugging that cable into my motherboard. We will put our DVD drive back in first. And here's where we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll connect the IDE cable and as well as the power cable. Okay, and take note of the IDE cable here. If this IDE cable is left underneath as you're trying to install the DVD drive, well, it can puncture it. And how do I know? Well, because that's what I did, as you can see right here. Thankfully, it wasn't a big enough puncture, so I was able to still use this cable, but keep that in mind. You don't want to prove, you want to prevent doing that. And let's go ahead and take our IDE to SATA adapter and let's put that in. So you just have to make sure you turn it the right way and it will snap in there. Now, later on, when you turn this on, it'll show red that shows that it's active. Feed the power cable back through these designated slots and then just plug that into the back of the adapter. Okay, and so now you're just gonna need to plug in this IDE cable. Okay, back over on my Xbox, I've went ahead and I've put in the engineering disc that we were using in the previous episode. And it says Xbox, and then down at the bottom, you'll see Linux. And then it will say, hey, we detected a new hard disk drive. Do you want to format? We're going to select yes on this, so both triggers and start. You need to do that again here. It's just going to give you a couple of warnings that you're about to format this drive. Uh, we are going to use an F drive here primarily because we have a larger hard disk drive. So this is one terabyte, which means we're going to want an F and then we're probably not going to want a G. Now, a G drive is very useful if you've got up to the two terabytes, which is the max. So you could put basically a gig on F and then another gig on G. So we're going to format this and it says press both triggers and start to continue. And here we go, we get our Unleash X screen. So next you're gonna to wanna to work with this tool called XB Partitioner. Now for the most part, it should load automatically. For mine, what I did was I just went ahead and I booted back to that DVD drive and then I selected the live application option and then I selected XB Partitioner. This is a very simple, easy to use tool. Um, what we're gonna do is basically hit the A button and we're gonna cycle through some of the different profiles. Now, this is the profile where I'm gonna use the remaining space, which is 924 gigabytes for my ELF drive. Okay, so press the start button on your controller here and it's gonna ask you, hit Y to continue here. 
partition table written, and it is all done at this point. And to exit out this thing, just hit the back button and then just hit B and it will get you out of the screen. Okay, so here is the screen that Mon booted into. Obviously, you can change just the skin here and go back to maybe like one of the default. I believe this is one that the tool sets by default. So thank you so very much for watching this today. I hope this helped. I hope this made it maybe a little bit easier. Uh, if you have questions, obviously just drop them down into the comments below. I would greatly appreciate a like, a comment, or maybe a subscribe, or maybe you want to give me all three. Well, thank you so very much for watching. Until the next time, Michael out.